Hello and welcome to Good Old Radio Vintage Radio Shows. Kick back, grab a cup of coffee, some favorite tea, and let's start the show. Today's show is Arch Obler's Plays Presents A Gallery of Big Shots. Sponsored by Good Music Radio, let's start the show. Mutual presents Arch Obler's Plays. The Mutual Broadcasting System has the pleasure of presenting the 14th broadcast of a special 26-week series of plays by radio playwright Arch Obler. In this series, we hope to bring you dramas full of the excitement and the meaning of plays told in relation to the expanding world we live in. Tonight, inspired by a suggestion from G.I. friend Elliot Lewis, Arch Obler presents... A Gallery of Big Shots. Feminine Big Shots. I hasten to speak to the women in my audience. Dear ladies, believe me, I like you very much so that if anything in what follows resembles dislike of the fair sex, the resemblance is absolutely accidental. Because these women we are going to speak about are of a special sort. Bragging, swaggering, trumpeting, strutting, magniloquent. Quite, thank heavens, unlike you. For these women are big shots. A gallery of big shots. Portrait number one, Miss Beautiful. I just loved singing her music, don't you, Mr. Leahy? Yeah. Yeah, sure do. Is that Eddie who just came in? Eddie? Eddie who? Eddie Sullivan. Oh. He's just the sweetest. At Madison Square Garden, one of those huge benefits, he had them throw the spotlight right down on little me and Walter W. Winchell? As far as I'm concerned, he'll go unmentionable. The nerve. You know what he said about me? No. No, I'm sorry, I don't. He said that, as far as he was concerned, all the Atlantic City bathing contest winners could be laid end to end and it wouldn't make much difference. Can you imagine saying a thing like that? No. I... I can't. Just because a girl has ability enough to win a competition is no reason to talk about her that way now, is it? No. Of course not. Another drink? No. No, one is my limit. I'll just sit and toy with my glass the rest of the evening. Is that a fact? Yes. Max told me. Max who? Max Factor, somebody. Told me the alcohol has a sort of effect on the skin pores, causing them to constrict or expand. There's something that's very negative. He said that. I just toy with one drink all night. Sure. Sure. Anyone as beautiful as you are has got to sort of watch out. Now, that, Mr. Leahy, was a very profound thing you just said. Was it? It was, indeed. Well, I've got to treat my face and my figure as if it belonged to somebody else. Yeah. Mm. Why, when I see my face on the cover of Life magazine, a red book, I'm as critic, as they say, about how I look as if it was somebody else. Why, if there's a single hair out of place, I simply can't eat for at least 24 hours. You don't say. Have another drink? Oh, I-, I beg your pardon. That's perfectly all right. Like a certain producer whose name will go unmentionable once said, he said, Moselle, a face and a body like yours is a holy trust to be held like a chalice. You understand the assimilation, don't you, Mr. Leahy? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you did. Well, it's a great responsibility, Mr. Leahy. Last year, I was on ten covers and over 15 billboards, not counting the subway, when I was Miss Pure Gold Beer of 1944. So you might say my face is public property. I think that everybody who's in the public eye has a great responsibility, just as much as if they were... I guess they're going to start the floor show. Oh. Oh, yes. Did you know I studied voice one week? You don't say. Greetings and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Before we begin our very small entertainment, may I introduce a few celebrities with us tonight? Mr. Leahy, did you give the headway to the note I gave you? Oh, sure, Moselle, sure. 
Great responsibility. A gallery of big shots. Portrait number two. Executive. War crop. Miss Gatsky, Miss Gatsky, please cease work. Miss Gatsky. Sorry. Girls, girls, I have a very important announcement to make. As you all know, ever since our Mr. Peterson, or uh, should we say uh, Corporal Peterson, was called to the colors of our country to serve in the armed forces, uh, this department has been without a leader, so to speak. Because, as you all know, my duties are upstairs with posting and billing, and not here with customer mail. Girls, your new supervisor, Miss Virginia Clinton. Girls, Miss Clinton. Thank you, girls. Thank you. I want you to know that I consider it a great honor and privilege, having been appointed to be your supervisor. I, too, began as a typist in the Chicago branch of this organization and worked my way up through the ranks, so to speak. So believe me, I know your problems, and I'm thoroughly sympathetic to them. I'm going to depend on each and every one of you for suggestions. What you will want, I will want. Miss Clinton, would it be possible... Not, not now, dear, not now, please. May I state first that in times such as these, even as some fight on the war front, our typewriters and shorthand books are the weapons with which we go out and conquer. I am sorry that one of you saw fit to laugh at that statement. It definitely shows an improper, subversive attitude. <clears throat> From my experience in our Chicago plant, I am to make the following recommendations to Mr. Ettis, our vice president in charge. First... Each of you girls will be divided, uh, that is to say, into groups of four, which will be called a squad. Each squad shall have appointed to it a fifth girl, who will be the squadron leader, and who will be responsible for the outfit of said squad. Uh, these uh, squadron leaders will be chosen by your supervisor on the basis of executive ability and company loyalty, and will be given the title of sergeant. Every two squads will be part of a platoon, which in turn will be in charge of a girl chosen on the basis of executive ability and company loyalty and will be known as a lieutenant. <laughs> if you please, girls, girls. The sergeant's duties will be as follows. One, to see the typewriters are kept in perfect order and covered at the close of the business day. The lieutenant's duties will be as follows. One, to see that the sergeants properly execute their offices, and two, to bring into play their own personal initiative when crises, such as crises, occur. And three, to correct the, shall we say, unbusinesslike apparel certain of you girls are now wearing. Uh, there, is, there is one regulation, however, which I wish to be put in force at once. From my previous experience in our Chicago plant, I am strongly of the opinion, and I'm sure you will concur with me, that entirely too much time is being spent off the floor. Beginning at once, rest periods will be limited to five minutes in each hour. If any emergencies occur, permission to leave your desk must be obtained from me. Well, has anyone anything they wish to state openly? Heil Hitler. Who said that? Who said that? You will step forward. How dare you? Step forward. <laughs> A gallery 
of Big Shots. Portrait number three, Hired Girl. Maybelle, can I come in, please? It's Louise. Maybelle, I know you're in there. I just want to talk to you. Okay, I'm coming in. Gee, Maybelle, you might have asked me to come in. Jeepers, we're still friends. Well, are you just going to sit there? Aren't you going to say anything? Got nothing to say. Jeepers, Maybelle, don't be a character. After all, I didn't do anything. Got nothing to say. Maybelle, you just can't leave us. You just can't. Why, why you're one of the family. Yeah, it's my party next Friday. What'll I do if you don't... Oh, who in the world is that? Mabel, are you in? Uh, uh... Hey, small stuff. What are you doing here? What do you think? How you doing? Not so good. Okay, Hammerhead, find the nearest exit and let a man take over. Where'll I find one? Uh, okay, go on, go on. I ain't woofing. Blow, small fry. All right, Wonder Man. I hope you do better than I did. You better. Well, hiya, Maybelle. Ah, so you won't talk, huh? <laughs> well, that's okay. I like my women strong and silent. Hey, all this stuff about your quitting, that's just scuttlebutt, huh? Got nothing to say. Oh, come on. Gosh, whatever it is, I can straighten it out. Okay, give. Gave him a notice. Hey, now, wait a minute, Mabel. Listen, we can't get along without you. Holy cat, you're the best cook. Your pies. Well, gosh, Mabel, we can't... You, you just can't walk out on us like this. Jeepers, aren't you going to say anything? Got nothing to say. Oh, Mabel, gee. There's somebody knocking. Okay, I'll see who it is. Gosh, Pop. Well, uh, what are you doing here? Well, I just came up to, to talk to her. Oh, any luck? Oh, gosh, no. Dad, you just got to... All right, to... all right. Uh, huh, okay. Well, Mabel... You mind if I talk to you a bit? Got nothing to say. Well, I've got a great deal to say. I think all this is nonsense. You've got a good home here, good salary. We like you. There's no logical reason for any change. Gave her my notice. Yes, I know, but look, Mabel. Ever since the war, there have been... Well, you might say there's been a procession of servants in this house. None of them, not one, has come up to even the lowest standards of the sort of help... May well believe me. I was beginning to think that all potatoes were carbonated and that soup was made out of dishwater. <laughs> yeah. But you, Maybell, you've given me new hope. I was beginning to think, no, I was positive, that you were going to be with us, well, at least for the duration. And now to come home and find that you're talking about leaving, to have to go through... No. Oh, I couldn't endure it again. Ten dollars more a month. No, make it twenty. Do you hear that, Maybell? I'm going to raise your salary twenty dollars a month. Gave her my notice. All right. The best of us can make mistakes and change our minds. You say I made a mistake. No, no, I didn't mean that you made a mistake. I, I, I was, I was speaking in generalities. Maybell, listen. I apologize for my wife. I don't know what happened. I can't believe that she. I mean, all right, whatever it was. She was in the wrong and you were in the right, and I apologize for it. You hear that, Maybell? I'm apologizing. Mrs. Martin. Sure, sure, but I'm apologizing for her. It's the same thing. No. But I won't have Alice say Laguerre or no say Laguerre. There are limits. I mean to have to... Maybell, 30 a month, $30 a month. And every other Wednesday off, too. I can arrange that between the kids and myself. We can do the work. $30 a month, your regular time off, and Wednesdays. Isn't that wonderful, Maybell? Wednesdays? Yes, yes. $30 a month more? Yes, of course. The missus has taken it all back? Whatever it was, absolutely. Well, Maybell, what's the happy word? Well, Mr. Martin. Yes? I'll think it over. A 
Gallery of Big Shots. Portrait number four, Chanteurs. Shut that door. Shut the door. Will somebody shut that rootin' door? Max, we can talk. Please, Felice. We can talk, Max. We can talk about when you were a baby. Oh, now, Felice. Where were you a baby, Max? Was it Nishni Novgorod or Schnippishik? Oh, now, Felice. Or was it Delancey Street under a wet rock? Follow the Harrigans, he said. Oh, they're a nice little dance team just starting out. Ten curtain calls, you hear? Ten curtain calls. Felice, your voice. The devil with my voice. You get them off the bill. Get them off. But, Felice. What do you mean you can't do it? What do you think I pay you 10% for? To smoke my cigarettes and drink my liquor? Oh, oh so that's it. You're managing them, are you? Oh, Felice. There go. But don't think that's all. Oh, no, Felice. Who won the Radio Digest poll as the outstanding chanteurs of 1945? I did. Yeah, yeah, but... Now, but... don't talk so much. You fire that root and Joe Mark. Oh, Felice. Press agent. Press agent. The only thing he can press is his pants. Get me up at 5 o'clock in the morning to break a root and bottle over the back of a ship. But, Felice... But is the ship on? Number five, beautician. Well, well, well. If it isn't our Mrs. Cragen, and how are you? How do you do, Miss Westland? If my hair ever dries, I'll be very well myself. Oh, patience, my dear Mrs. Cragen, patience. Rome wasn't built in a day, and our salon can't do justice to your cuffware in less than two hours. As es clare matin. See you later. Oh, 
good morning, Mrs. Nicholas. And what are we doing to you this morning? Oh, I haven't had my hair washed in two weeks. Uh, <laughs> having one of our La Rain oil shampoos. Excellent, excellent. The dust in the air. I tell you, something must be done about the dust in the air. <laughs> Don't you think so? The dirtiest set of hair you ever had. Mm-hmm, of dust. course. Oh, Personally, oh, I believe oh, this oh, war oh, has something to do with it. All the excitement that's bound to raise dust. Irene. Yes, Miss Westland. Give dear Mrs. Nicholas an extra egg on her hair this morning. Shortages or no, we do want it to look lovely and a credit to our salon. Quickly, get the egg, quickly. Be stat piquito to her. See you later. Hello? Hello? Irene, I thought you told me there was a telephone call. But there was, I told But there's no one. Hello? Hello? Yes. Yes, this is Miss Westland. Who? Oh. Oh, yes, Mrs. Gillum. Yes, yes, this is Miss Westland. Is there something you wanted? Oh, an appointment. Really? I'm sorry, I don't believe that's possible. No, not tomorrow. No, nor Saturday. My dear Mrs. Gillum, it isn't a question of whether it's today or tomorrow or next week. I'm just afraid we're all booked up. No, no, there's nothing strange about it. Appointments are available only to those who keep their appointments. Yes. How nice of you to remember. You did indeed. Called out of town. I do not feel that is a proper excuse. You know about our 24-hour cancellation rule. Your son. Oh, yes, the lieutenant. He came back where? Convalescent hospital. The army set. That's very nice, Mrs. Gillum. But I consider this salon also part of the war activities. I say there is no greater morale builder than a good cold wave. Appointments must be kept. I'm so sorry. A gallery of big shots. Portrait number six, Bobby Soxer. Big Shots, Final Portrait, Commentator. Well, 
Will be all right to set up the microphone here, Miss Compton? Yes, yes, anywhere will do. Rollins, what time do we go on the air? In about three minutes, Miss Compton. Are you set? Yes, of course. Yeah, you're always right in there when the news breaks, aren't you, Miss Compton? One does what one can. Oh, you do better than that. We were having an argument back in the station. How many newspapers you win now, Miss Compton? How many? Well, one does. Oh, sure, sir. sure, I get it. I should say 280 publications. <whistles> then, of course, there are the Sunday editions. There she blows. Beaton's coming to order. Yes, yes. <laughs> it sure is something Wilson and FDR would have liked to have seen. It sure is. Yes, Woodrow Wilson and Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Take it in five seconds. Five, four, three, two... Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Margaret Compton bringing you a special broadcast from the city of the Golden Gate. I'm speaking to you tonight from a broadcast booth overlooking the opening session of the United Nations Conference on... Uh, Forgive me, I can never remember names. I had a paper here. Oh, yes, the United Nations Conference on International Organization. Uh, right at this moment, a very dignified gentleman is addressing the assemblage. The matter of fact is, from my broadcasting booth, I'm looking right down at him. I believe at the moment he's talking about, uh, yes, an international court of justice to decide legal disputes between nations in order to prevent wars. <laughs> but as important as that may be, I'm sure you folks out there are much more interested in the behind-the-scenes stories. Now, on my way up here from Hollywood, I rode up with a certain producer who told me in complete confidence that Sheikh Allah bin, uh, bin something or other, who's the Arabian delegate to this conference, is a great fan of Anne Sheridan's. In fact, one wall of his tent is simply covered with pictures of the Warner Brothers star, who incidentally is not at this peace conference, but en route to Florida with a certain publicity man, who is rumored to be her latest heart, and who incidentally started in the picture business publicizing that great classic, The Sheikh, with Rudolph Valentino, which makes it a pretty small world after all. Right at this moment, the very distinguished gentleman at the podium is talking something about economic and social... Oh, oh we'll come back to that. Uh, speaking of distinguished gentlemen, reminds me of a story told me in complete confidence by Charles Coburn. Charlie, or Chucky as we know him, was at a party recently, and as he sat there with his favorite orange juice in his hand, in came a certain little RKO starlet with one of those hats. And I mean one of those hats. Well, Chucky took one look at that hat and he... Oh, by the way, speaking of hats, last night I was at the top of the mark here in dear little old San Francisco, and Mrs. Anthony Eden, at least someone said she was Anthony Eden's wife, he's that tall, handsome Britisher all the girls are swooning about, and speaking of swooning, oh dear, I'm sorry, but my little announcer is signaling to me that the special five minutes from the great special San Francisco conference are up. So this is your confidential friend, Margaret Compton, speaking to you through my 280 columns and over 196 radio stations coast to coast with the latest, the most authentic, the most important personality stories of the day. Today, through special arrangement, directly from the United Nations Conference. That's all. Goodbye. Farewell. Fini. just heard Big Shot, a new play by Arch Obler. The cast in the order of their appearance in the gallery of Big Shots were Miss Beauty, Lorene Tuttle, Executive, Mary Jane Croft, Hired Help, Jane Morgan and Barbara Eiler, Chanteurs, Lynn Whitney, Beautician, Helga Moray, Bobby Soxer, Louise Erickson, Commentator, Dorothy Scott. The original music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. Next week, we'll bring you, by request, a performance of one of Mr. Obler's most unusual plays, Special to Hollywood, starring Gail Page and Bruce Elliott. This will be the 15th in a special series of plays written, produced, and directed for the Mutual Broadcasting System by Arch Obler. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Hey, thanks for listening to Good Old Radio and Arch Obler's Plays. 
please take the time to subscribe, like our videos, and share them with the whole wide world. We appreciate it. Talk to you next time.